let's talk a little bit about creating a cumulative count of species. Um, one of the species groups we have in here is these carbs, carbonate endemics, oxpag, urpa, lekeb, erov, and asal. Um, so what we want to conserve these, they're important species. Here, let's take a look, right, if I turn them on. One of the interesting things about them is they're all, they're all carbonate rock loving. So they do occur coincidentally in a couple locations. Like if we query here, right, we can see we've got two in a coincident location. Here we have three. So the places on the map where you have species occurring in the same place might be more important. So how do you, how do you create a, a representation that or a, a count of that? And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it using some of the raster tools you've you've already used. So what I have here is a process where I take a, a polygon layer and I turn it into a raster. So let's let's do that right now. So featured a raster. Um, all right, connect it up. And then let's take a look at the tool. So it's based on a field. Um, a lot of these species have a type field or a field named specifically after the species that tell you what it is. So I'm going to select the arrow field. Um, the output, I'm actually going to call it a raster called arrow, right? Um, just like the others. Um, your auto layout, so process. Now, one of the things you may have been noticing is we're applying planning values to, to everything that we do an overlay to. So I need to reclassify this um, to give it some planning values. So put the, the newly made raster into this for classify. Now, I actually only have one class. It's the species itself. Um, by default, since there's only one polygon going in, it gets a value of one, zero to one. But I want to say for, for any place for Erov where it has habitat, that's high habitat potential. So that's a nine. And the rest of the map is one. And you have to remember to put in that one. If you put in no data, um, remember, no data doesn't overlay when you use any of the overlay tools. So you're, anything that's set no data, you're, you're blocking out. So here, let's auto map it. And we'll go ahead and run these two tools. Right? And then I'll show you what we get. So. Let's add the raster. So here we've got the raster polygons. If I identify them, right, there's the original era of the field and the value threatened and endangered plant TEP era of. Cool. Now let's add the reclassified one. Oop, you know what? I'll slap here. I didn't give that a good name. Let's let's name this one. Uh, arrow value, and then actually this one also needs to have its name fixed. Always good to keep your naming consistent, keep your data management clean. Okay, so let's rerun this. Run it. Super quick. Add it to the display. Right now I actually have for this plant species, a map with values of one, where the plant doesn't occur, values of nine, pixel values of nine, where the plant does occur. So, if I were to add these all together, right, I would get a measure of where multiple species occur. There's a tool called Weighted Sum. It's related to Weighted Overlay, but it's different. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm just going to start feeding it all these valueized species layers. Um, you know what? It always does that. I, I waited up and grab for weighted sum, but I actually accidentally grabbed weighted overlay. Sometimes it grabs the tool above it. So ah, see again. There we go. Weighted sum. So I'm putting them in. Okay, I'm 
I'm going to call the output uh, carbs weighted sum. So now, as you'd imagine, um, if I had all five species coincident in one place, be uh, nine times five, I'd get a value of 45. If I have no species in a, in a location, I'll get a value of five. Um, and then I'm going to get combinations in between, depending on, on how many species occur at a location. All right. Okay, so let's add this to the display. Um, it comes in, uh, if you look at the symbology, it's kind of annoying. It comes in as classified, switch it to unique value, and it'll show you all the possible unique values. Um, I'd recommend re-symbolizing it just so it's a little easier to interpret. Okay, so yellow means uh, no species occurred. 13 means 1, 21 means 2, 29 means 3, and 37 means 4. So now I want to turn this back into my 9 point um, planning value scale. So I'll just run a reclassify. And then I'm going to call the output. Um, my new issue, I'm going to put it in my results geodatabase here. This is carbonate species habitat occurrence. Or let's see, habitat frequency. Let's call it that. So high values mean lo lots of lots of habitat. Okay, so I want to make sure 21 to 37. I want to make sure that I actually have one value for each of these. So 5 gets a 1. 13, it's still pretty important, right? It's two It's two species. It's uh, 13 is one species. I don't want to leave it behind, so I'm going to give it a value of 5. Uh, 21, that's two species. So that'll get a 6. Um, twenty nine. Uh, we'll get a seven or a nine. So any any time I have more than twenty nine to thirty seven. All right. So if I have three or four species, that's really high priority. Everything else, right, is one. If there's no species, it's one. So there's my reclassification. Click OK. OK, run the model. Let me auto layout it and zoom to it. And then we'll just add our the resulting issue here. And there it is. Uh, one through nine. Um, again, might have to go in, change the symbology, give it a nicer looking color. Um, but yeah, so there we see, right, right in here, we've got areas where we've got more coincident species. And now it's rated on a scale of high to low. So here's that model. I'll let you guys take another another look at this one in case you want to use it for reference. But again, these are the raster tools you know. You guys, you know, we did a lot of interpolation, but future, future to raster just converts based on a field. You guys know how to use reclass. Weighted sum is like weighted overlay. It's a little bit new, but it's pretty simple. You could actually do this with a sum tool, right? Um, or with map algebra, just adding these together using the map algebra you learned. That's another way to do it. And then a reclassify at the end to get it to a, a one to nine scale. Okay, enjoy.